Listen, I hear what you're saying, but it's not my fault that people don't take advantage of these options. The fact of the matter is these things exist for a reason. And since they're there and completely legal, why not take advantage of it and enhance your gameplay that much more? You should definitely do it. Ladies and gentlemen, Welcome back to the channel, it's JR, and in today's video, I'm gonna be covering my top three tips for enhancing your Call of Duty gameplay today. You can do this right now, as soon as you're done watching this video. These are things that I do across all the Call of Duties over the last few years, and it's something that you can do with the other Call of Duties as well, but today we're focusing on enhancing your Call of Duty Vanguard gameplay. And if you're in it to win it, stay tuned to the end of this video because I'm gonna be covering one extra bonus tip that'll help you get more kills on the variety of maps that Call of Duty Vanguard has been offering a lot lately. So without further ado, let's go. Right out of the gate here, we're talking about sensitivity settings. And I know what you're thinking. Ah, oh, JR, you're killing me, man. You're hitting me with a settings tip? Yes, trust me. A lot of the greatest players, a lot of the best players in this game focus on these setting tips. Okay, so if you have a PlayStation, Look at your triangle button. To the left of that triangle button is your options button. I don't know what it looks like in Xbox, but I'm sure it's very similar. If you press that button, you will get into your settings mode. Now what you're gonna do from here is scroll on over to the control section. Oh wait, you'll already start in the controller section. That's fantastic. Less work for you guys. So scroll down just a couple and you'll see where it says horizontal stick sensitivity and vertical stick sensitivity. You do not want this extremely low. You don't want it there. And you definitely don't want it on the high end. So you don't want it at 1 and you don't want it at 20. 20 literally says insane. If you play on 20, you are just an animal. And that's not me. So you want to set this to whatever works best for you. If you're having trouble shooting enemies and staying on target, or you're getting shot from behind and you can't turn on that enemy fast enough, your issue lies right here. Horizontal stick sensitivity or vertical. I like to keep mine around an 8 and a 7 respectively, but you can set it to whatever it is that you like. Now, you can also adjust the sensitivity for when you aim down sight. So if you're ADSing, you go down a couple steps here, you can adjust if you want that at a particular level or not. So you might want it at a 1.0, which is a little bit high. I personally like to tune that back down to about a 0.8 or 0.9. That way if I'm aiming down sight, I don't drift off target all that much, if at all, because the sensitivity is lower. Listen, our thumbs, they're big. They're bulky. They get in the way. They're not used to having these fine motor skills on Call of Duty, especially if this is your first time playing. So if you set these settings accordingly that work best for you right now, that's fantastic. You can end up changing them in the future as time goes on, but this is what is going to allow you to play consistently well game after game and get those kills and stay on target. Now tip number two also lies within the settings tab and it is just as important if not more important than tip number one and it falls into the button layout preset section. So just under the sensitivity section that we were in you'll see a spot that says button layout preset which by default is set to default. And what that means is that to fire your weapon, you have to press the R2 button. Now, if you have your controller in your hand, that's fantastic. If you don't, I'm sure you can imagine what I'm about to say. Press down on your R2 button and push down as much as you can. And you get to feel a bit of that wiggle room that exists there. It's almost like the kind of play that you have if you drive a truck and you're on the steering wheel. And you have that play in the steering wheel before it actually engages and turns the way you want it to. That's very similar to what you have with this button here. That play, that take up, doesn't allow you to kill the enemy as quick. And in a game where time to kill is so fast, you want to be able to optimize whatever button it is you're using to kill the enemy quickly. So what I recommend you do here is change it from default, hit the square button. You see square says show more. So we're going to click that and change it from off to on and what you just did there is you flipped the button layout so now instead of pressing r2 to fire you're pressing r1 to fire and if you guys are used to playing with r2 as fire i'm going to tell you straight up this is going to be a bit of an odd change for you to get adjusted to as it was for me 
But after time of playing with it like this, I'd say a few games, a few days, and then a few weeks, I came to realize that I was getting many more kills a lot faster and the game felt much more natural to play, which again, in turn, changed to more kills, uh, you know, a higher KD, and just an overall better game feel. So I highly encourage that you switch this button layout to that of flip so that you fire with the R1 button. Now, tip number three can be a bit of a doozy. There are a lot of maps in this game. And as you can see me selecting various maps here, there are plenty to choose from. But some of the best players in the world practice on these maps before engaging in actual multiplayer and different variations of those games. And the reason is, if you play in like a customs mode version of this map, you're not playing against anybody. There's nobody trying to kill you. So you can explore the map in its entirety and figure out all the nooks and crannies, where the windows are, where the doors are, where the camping spots are, where the head glitch spots are. You can really fine tune your skills of navigating these maps so that when you engage in real gameplay against people that are shooting back at you, you know the map better than they do. This is like knowing your home territory, knowing the layout of your house, of your neighborhood. It's important. You don't want to get lost. These maps are brand new. So spend a little bit of extra time in maybe custom game mode and set these different maps and explore a little bit and find some spots that you can work when you actually engage in multiplayer to shoot some people up, man, have a good time and increase your KD. If you're still watching the video, feel free to go ahead, drop a like, drop a comment in the comment section. Let me know some of your thoughts regarding this topic, and maybe you have some of your own solutions and tips and tricks that I'd love to hear about. But now without further ado, let's jump into the bonus tip that I told you guys I'd be giving you. And this is something that's so easily overlooked time and time again. You know, amateur, even novice, and some intermediate players, they fail to recognize that you should use different guns based on the maps that you're playing in. If you're playing on a big map, you should not be using an SMG. The MP40 is not gonna do you well on some of these bigger maps. It will on those smaller maps, but not on the bigger ones. So if you're playing on a larger size map, you wanna use something like an assault rifle, one of the LMGs. If you're a sniper, take out one of the sniper rifles, feel free. Any of those would work, even the marksman rifles, those are fantastic. You have those options for the mid, and I would even say large size maps for sure. On the smaller maps, going up toward maybe about a medium size map, you want to use more so the SMGs. So you have your MP40s and all these other variations. Can you use an assault rifle on those maps? Yes, you can. If you make the attachments work for you, you can run around like an SMG and, and shoot people, of course. But the overall effect is not going to be the same because the aim down sight speed and the sprint to fire time on the assault rifles are not as good as they are on the SMGs. Think about it from a logical perspective. Assault rifles are larger weapons and they're heavier, much bigger than the SMGs. So if you're gonna use the SMG, which is a lot smaller and lighter, you will naturally be able to sprint to fire faster and aim down sight faster. So that's my final tip for you guys. Be cognizant of what gun you're using on the map. I know some people, they're real finicky. They just like using the one gun but mix it up, have two guns in the arsenal that you can bust out depending on what map you are and you will see greater success. Well, ladies and gents, that just about does it for this one today. If you received any value or enjoyment out of the video, please feel free to hit the like button, share with a friend or two, and subscribe to our channel for more content. We appreciate you stopping by and we'll see you guys and gals in the next one. Take care.